Australia is home to more non-native megafauna species than any other country in the world, with at least 14 different species living wild in the country, alongside numerous smaller non-native animals. In this video, we're going to explore the impacts, both positive and negative, that these species have on the environment. Many of us are aware of the damage invasive species can do, but some people believe that the introduced megafauna could benefit Australian ecosystems by acting as proxies for their extinct megafauna, like the 3.5 ton Diprotodon or the 1 ton Paler Chestes. First we'll look at camels. There are more than 300,000 feral camels living in Australia, which are the only wild dromedary camels in the world as they are extinct in the wild in their native range. They were brought to Australia as pack animals in the 1800s because horses were unsuited to transporting goods in the harsh Australian climate. In the 1920s, as camel ears left and motor transportation became prevalent, people released their camels into the Australian outback. Camels are far from the most damaging non-native species in Australia, however, they do cause some environmental damage, especially when densities exceed 2 camels per square kilometre, which is quite high. For context, the ideal density for red deer in Scotland is 2 per square kilometre. Scottish red deer are about one third the weight of dromedary camels and Scottish ecosystems produce much more vegetation than the arid areas where camels live in Australia. It's understandable that camels can damage the environment at those densities. They have been known to erode sand dunes, decrease water quality by urinating or defecating in it and compete with native animals for food and water. However, camels can also have some ecological benefits. They can eat thorny and prickly plants and very low quality dry vegetation, thus preventing wildfires which are a huge risk in Australia. They also travel long distances dispersing many seeds through their dung and fur. There were large animals that specifically lived in the arid regions of Australia when humans first arrived, like the giant wombat Fascolonus gigas which weighed as much as a plain zebra. It could be argued that the camels are filling the ecological role these extinct animals once filled. The bigger problem with camels in Australia seems to be their population density. There is no evidence of Australian animals hunting camels, though it is thought that newborn calves could be taken by dingoes if the mother could be avoided. For camels, population control seems more appropriate than eradication. Next, let's look at feral donkeys, which are also adapted to arid areas and descended from the critically endangered African wild ass. Like camels, donkeys were set free in Australia when they were deemed to have no more value and there are now around 5 million of them living wild. Donkeys have hard hooves like many of the animals we'll discuss which can damage Australian ecosystems. The soil is often dry and fragile and large animals walking on sharp, hard hooves can quickly erode it, a process that takes millennia to repair. Some species like planigales, the smallest marsupials in the world, use cracks in the soil and other niches to make their homes. The presence of hard hoofed animals can destroy these homes and negatively affect planigale populations. Donkeys also compete with native animals for food and water which can be particularly damaging in the arid outback where these resources are scarce. However, donkeys are capable of finding water 6 feet underground by digging with their hooves, creating watering holes that benefit native animals and can become habitats for smaller animals and plants. Like camels, donkeys help reduce the risk of wildfires. It is thought that dingoes do prey on donkeys to some extent, as donkey populations are lower where dingoes are present, and donkeys appear in dingo diets, though some of this may be from scavenging. There are roughly 200,000 feral water buffalo in northern Australia. They were introduced in the 1820s from Indonesia by early British settlers, but were set free as farms were abandoned over time. Water buffalo can damage habitats for native animals and compete with them for food. Some species such as turtles, barramundi and magpie geese see population reductions where buffalo are present. Bird diversity is heavily reduced at watering holes accessible to water buffalo and feral cattle, according to a study in the Northern Territory. However, water buffalo also create ponds and other wetland habitats through their digging with their horns and hooves. Their grazing creates openings for sunlight to reach the wetlands and prevents ponds from being overrun with vegetation and drying out. They also played a role in saving saltwater crocodiles, which were suffering from persecution. Crocodiles were considered a nuisance until it was noticed that they regularly preyed on water buffalo and feral pigs, proving useful for both farmers and the ecosystem. Dingoes are also known to prey on water buffalo, particularly calves, but sometimes even weak or young adults. Six deer species are now found in Australia. Sambar deer, red deer, rusa deer, hog deer, fallow deer and chital. 
Their ecological impacts are typical of large herbivores, causing some damage from their hard hooves, but also providing benefits like fire prevention. However, the benefits deer provide are similar to those provided by kangaroos and other native herbivores, making deer seem like unnecessary competition without much added ecological benefit. Again, the real issue is population density though. They are not found everywhere in Australia, but are quickly spreading, with density sometimes exceeding 50 deer per square kilometre. Dingoes have been shown to reduce deer densities, especially among smaller species like hog deer, fallow deer and chital. Now, let's discuss goats. Goats have been referred to as desert makers, and for good reason. Although I love goats and their relatives serve important roles in their ecosystems, feral goats are a very damaging invasive species. Goats can live in almost any habitat and eat thorny plants that other animals can't, which often act as safety nets for ecosystems. When herbivores pass through an area, they eat the grasses, herbs and browse the trees, leaving behind the difficult to eat plants. These thorny plants often protect tree seedlings, nesting birds and other small animals. Life then spreads from these prickly refuges when herbivores leave. However, goats can graze an area to nothing, causing unstable soils and removing vital shelter. They are also incredible climbers, capable of reaching and destroying areas of scrub and trees that otherwise provide refuge for many species and a starting point for ecosystems to spread from. Fortunately, where dingoes are present, they significantly reduce goat numbers. Wedge-tailed eagles and even feral pigs and foxes can prey on newborn goats as well. Feral pigs, however, seem to have mostly negative effects in Australia. They rootle and dig up soil, which in their native range in Eurasia is beneficial. In Australia though, the soil is fragile and there aren't species that co-evolved with pigs to reap the benefits of their disturbance. There are likely some small benefits, like giving birds access to exposed invertebrates, but mostly it just damages the soil. It's estimated that there are around 23 million feral pigs, and even though crocodiles and dingoes prey on them, it's not enough to control their population. Feral pigs are also predators of many small animals, especially ground nesting birds, and they regularly eat cassowary and emu chicks and eggs. In many areas, they are found to be the most common scavenger on roadkill, dominating other native scavengers like eagles and monitor lizards. Next we'll look at feral cattle and bantam. There are over 100,000 feral cattle in Northern Australia, known as scrub cattle, and around 3,000 bantam, an introduced wild cattle species native to Southern Asia, which were farmed in Northern Australia for a short period. Cattle, being very large and hard hooved, are guilty of damaging soils and habitats. However, due to their size, they can alter ecosystems for good and bad. They prevent areas from scrubbing over with their grazing, reducing wildfires and create openings in scrub and woodland. Scrub cattle are impressive looking animals and have been living wild for decades, resembling the extinct aurochs of Eurasia. Australian predators aren't well equipped to keep their populations in check. Saltwater crocodiles do take feral cattle and dingoes hunt calves, but without human control the population would continue to rise. Now, onto feral horses, known as brumbies. Brumbies cause similar damage to other large hard-hoofed mammals, and the usual positives like fire prevention and some beneficial grazing. The main problem with feral horses is their population. There are 400,000 of them. In areas of highest density, like Kosciuszko National Park, there are 7 horses per square kilometre. This would be too much even in Europe, where wild horses once roamed. In Australia, with its unique wildlife and soils ill-equipped to support hoofed mammals, the damage is severe. Kosciuszko National Park has areas grazed to nothing, with rapidly eroding riverbanks, causing land loss and river silting. Dingoes can take foals, but this seldom occurs in most areas. In the snowy mountains, however, dingo packs prey on horses more often, and pack sizes in the area are larger, possibly in response to the presence of feral horses. Dingoes themselves are an introduced species in Australia, arriving over 3,500 years ago. Although they likely cause significant damage upon introduction, they are now an important part of the ecosystem and the only control for many introduced herbivores, as well as feral cats and foxes. A 2013 study showed that while dingoes likely contributed to the extinction of the thylacine and the Tasmanian devil on the mainland around 3,200 years ago, increased human activity, technology and rapid climate change were more significant factors in these extinctions. 
Some farmers in Australia are transitioning to cattle from sheep and are allowing dingoes back onto their lands to control herbivore populations. One farmer in Western Australia reported that 61% of his grass was being grazed by kangaroos and feral goats, with just 39 grazed by his own sheep on his 134,000 hectare ranch. When he allowed dingoes back, they completely wiped out the goats and reduced the kangaroo population from 15,000 to just 1,500. Native herbivore populations can also be damaging in the absence of predators. Overall, the main problem with introduced ungulates in Australia is their population densities and the lack of predators to control them. Some animals could be used as proxies for the extinct Australian megafauna, but without predators, it is hard to see these benefits as overpopulation leads to ecological damage. Camels and donkeys in particular seem to do less damage and are adapted to drier regions. Water buffalo, cattle and horses could also be beneficial as Australia lacks herbivores capable of altering landscapes like they can. However, their populations cannot remain as they are. When densities are too high, the benefits of these animals' disturbances disappear, leaving only damage. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'd love to see any suggestions for future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.